Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today's topic for presentation is Superior Longitudinal Lingual. It's a, one of the tongue muscle. So if you are new to my channel, kindly can subscribe to my channel and press the bell button for the latest notification. So the tongue has got two lateral borders and a tip and the root. The upper surface is called the dorsal surface and the lower surface is called the ventral surface. So this tongue has got two types. So the tongue has got two group of muscles, extrinsic muscles and intrinsic muscles. Extrinsic muscles are the muscles which begin from one or the other bone of the skull and finally reach onto the tongue. So it alters the position of the tongue with respect to the bones. Whereas intrinsic muscles are those which are present within the tongue and they alter the shape and the contour of the tongue. So come to the various intrinsic muscles. First one is superior longitudinal muscle. So this is the length of your tongue. Okay. That is like this sideways. This is posterior and anterior. This is the tip. Okay. So here is the median fibrous septa. Here. Closer to the upper surface. This is superior longitudinal muscle. Closer to the lower aspect, the ventral aspect, it is inferior longitudinal muscle. Closer to the dorsal aspect is superior longitudinal muscle. From the median septa towards the lateral border, it is transversely oriented. So it's called as transversus lingual. From the upper surface towards the lower surface, vertically running muscle is called verticalis lingual. So intrinsic muscle will do the following action. It can either lengthen or shorten the tongue. It can either curl, curly, that is it may, can make the tongue curl upon itself or uncurls on the tongue. It can flatten the tongue or roundens the tongue, that is it makes the tongue more convex. The surface, upper surface will become more convex, that is a rounding of the tongue or it can become flat like one chapati, okay, or a dough pizza. The superior longitudinal muscle location is it is present within the tongue. So that's why it's called the intrinsic muscle of the tongue. Closer to the upper surface, therefore called superior. It is along the tongue. So along, so is here L O N G. That is along, so it should be longitudinal. So that is the orientation of the position of the tongue, position of this muscle in the tongue. So this muscle takes origin from the median fibrous septa. This there is one wall in the middle of the tongue. It's a connective tissue wall. Median fibrous septa. So this septa divides the tongue into two halves, the right half and the left half. So this is the bilateral muscle. It's present on both sides actually. Here in diagrammatic representation, it's shown only on one side for a convenience. So this muscle takes origin from the median fibrous septa. This is the median fibrous septa. So it takes origin from the, this part. This is the what posterior part, right? So as it, com as it comes forward, it is diverging. You can see that it's diverging and it is getting attached to the mucous membrane. So if you see both the sides, it will be like V shape. So ultimately it gets attached to the mucous membrane of the tongue. So what can be the action of this muscle? Just think when this uh, muscle contracts that is reduction in the length of the muscle fiber when it when the length of this is reduced what can happen to the tongue can you guess if you have guessed it shortens then you have told the correct answer the length the intrinsic muscle I already told in the beginning it can either lengthen the tongue or shorten flatten the tongue or rounden the tongue so here which shortens the tongue when you eat ice cream, ice cream enters your mouth because of superior longitudinal muscle because it contracts and puts the ice cream into your oral cavity. So it shortens the tongue, is the action. And also it makes the dorsum of the tongue, this surface of the tongue, more concave. This surface of the tongue will become more concave, that is it's like a depressed area. Nerve supply of the tongue, especially the superior longitudinal muscle, in one statement, you can tell or oh, hypoglossal nerve. This is 12th cranial nerve. This is a nerve. It's coming underneath the tongue. So we call it as hypoglossal nerve. So here, superior longitudinal muscle. In fact, all the muscles of the tongue are supplied by hypoglossal nerve. 
except one muscle which begins from palate and it's called as palatoglossus. So except this muscle, remaining all the muscles of the tongue will be supplied by hypoglossal now or 12th renal nerve except this muscle palatoglossus which is supplied by 11th renal nerve or axillary nerve. That is one statement. If you remember this statement then you will remember the nerve supply of all the muscles of tongue. So if there is damage to the hypoglossal nerve then there is a paralysis of these muscles. Okay. Except this palatoglossus all the other muscles are paralyzed and there will be problem in speech especially lingual words like la, ta and all there will be defective pronunciation also mastication the chewing will be affected okay in summary intrinsic muscles are superior longitudinal muscle inferior longitudinal muscle transversus lingual verticalis lingual out of this today we studied superior longitudinal muscle kindly like and share this video with your family and friends and don't forget to press the thumbs up button to like this video kindly comment on this video and ask your doubts in the comment section so that I can solve that subscribe to my channel and press the bell button if you are not yet done kindly do that so that you get the latest notification of the videos thank you once again